these are older than humans. The day Sam finds it out, his life changes forever. The man is an inventor, so what if usually his inventions don't really work? This time though, he constructs something functioning, which is totally unexpected, the time machine. He just has to figure out for himself how old are Earth's inhabitants. The only problem is that… ah uh, well, you'll see. Sam's first stop isn't that far into the past, just a bit more than 40 years ago. He sees scientists in a lab. They're fussing over something he can't see. Ah, it's the year 1975, and researchers have just discovered the nylon-eating bacteria. These bacteria couldn't have existed before 1935, because that's when nylon was invented. The time machine takes Sam to his next destination a point of time around 10,000 years ago. After stepping out in the fresh air, the man hears a loud meow. A cat is running towards him. The animal looks pretty much like any modern-day kitty. Ah yes, scientists claim that cats were domesticated already 12,000 years ago. But the first cat's ancestor appeared 10 to 15 million years ago. The next stop is way further into the past, around 20,000 years BCE. Sam dares to leave the machine and cautiously steps outside. Ooh, is that a wolf behind that tree? Phew, it's just a dog. By this time, they have already evolved from a now extinct wolf species. After that, the time capsule takes Sam even deeper into the past, and he finds himself in Africa. That's where Homo sapiens, which is you and me and Sam himself, appear around 300,000 years ago. They were smaller than their ancestors and had impressively big brains, less heavy jaws, and smaller teeth. But Sam doesn't have time to make friends with early modern humans. He needs to travel further. He lands about 5 million years into the past. And just look at that, a fluffy elephant. Yep, that's the first mammoth ever. The South African mammoth. Oh, by the way, the last mammoth species to appear was the woolly mammoth. The size of the modern African elephant, it developed around 400,000 years ago in East Asia. Sam turns around and heads for his time machine when he notices another hairless mammoth. Only, it's not a mammoth. It's one of the first modern elephant ancestors, which also evolved around 7 to 5 million years ago. It means elephants and mammoths were roaming the planet at the same time. The machine takes Sam 20 million years into the past, and he sees the first ostriches. The largest living bird with eyes so big that they're larger than the bird's brain first appeared in Africa. The next stop, and Sam is 50 million years into the past. What he spots there is a chicken. Well, at least it's a bird that looks a bit like the modern-day chicken which apparently has multiple ancestors, mostly from Southeast Asia. Four species of wild jungle fowl added to the chicken's gene pool, but the bird was domesticated only 10,000 to 8,000 years ago. Before Sam has time to hop in his capsule, he notices a rat-sized animal. It turns out to be the first primate. Scientists managed to figure out it belonged to the primate family only thanks to the creature's teeth. Even so, they still had a hard time connecting these 50 million year old critters to modern primates. 50 million years into the past turns out to be a curious time. Sam notices a cute dog sized animal that resembles. Is it a horse? Right! The first horses were rather miniature creatures living in the forests. The next stop is 2 million years deeper into the past, and that's when Sam discovers the first bats. These creatures are an evolutionary mystery that has scientists baffled. If the first specimen recognizable as bats appeared already 52 million years ago, where did they come from? When the time machine makes a stop 100 million years BCE, Sam gets the fright of his life. Just a few feet from him, there's a gigantic crocodile. That's the so-called super croc an enormous creature 40 feet long and weighing almost 10 tons. By this time, crocodiles have already been evolving into something resembling modern animals for at least 100 million years. 
That's why Super Croc looks familiar, although more than twice bigger than the animal Sam saw in his time. When Sam peeks out of the time machine around 125 million years ago, he almost gets bitten by one of the first bees. It has just evolved from carnivorous wasps. Stop bugging me! 130 million years into the past, and Sam inhales a fresh scent of the first flowering plants. It means modern flowers have been around for a while. But if all Earth's history was compressed into an hour, flowering plants would only exist for the last minute and a half. Sam steps out of his time machine 200 million years ago and awes at the scenery around. The only thing bothering him is a faint buzzing sound next to his ear. Oh, it's the very first mosquito! Scientists connected modern mosquitoes to species that lived 226 million years ago. They look pretty much the same as most of the 3,500 mosquito species that exist nowadays. The next thing Sam knows, he's 300 million years deep into the past. He's gawking at the sky when something swooshes past him. The creature looks like a dragonfly, but its wingspan is no less than two feet. Scientists suppose dragonflies used to grow that massive because of the high oxygen level in the air in those times. About 315 million years BCE, Sam notices one of the first reptiles. Their skins have developed hard shells and don't have to be kept in water. Plus, reptile skin doesn't need to stay wet all the time. That's why the animals can finally move away from lakes and rivers. When Sam leaves his time capsule around 370 million years BCE, he sees the first trees starting to win over the planet. They mostly grow in swamps. By that time, plants have already developed special tissue and started to produce wood, turning into trees. But only the tree fern has survived since those ancient times. It grows in tropical rainforests in Australia, New Zealand, and nearby regions. Just another 10 million years deeper into the past, and Sam sees some of the earliest ferns. These plants are at least 380 million years old. But some scientists believe ferns might be much older, with the first of them evolving 430 million years ago. In any case, those have already gone extinct. By the way, the ancestors of some modern fern species grew the size of trees. Sam stops his time machine 400 million years into the past, near a big body of water. Probably an ocean? He's staring at the water totally perplexed. Is that a shark over there? But then it means they're older than trees. But how does Sam manage to recognize the animal? Earlier than 355 million years BCE, sharks look more like huge eels rather than torpedo-shaped predators. Only 100 million years ago, they started to look like modern animals, with well-developed teeth and a variety of forms and shapes. Sam decides not to change the location, just the time. That's why he finds himself at the same place only 35 million years earlier. He's walking along the shore when he spots something tiny. On closer inspection, he realizes it's a minuscule starfish that's smaller than his thumbnail. This species doesn't exist nowadays. Bigger and stronger starfish have replaced the teeny ones. The time capsule brings Sam 500 million years BCE. He seems to be still at the same body of water. As he crouches down, he notices a semi-transparent creature. It has tentacles and a distinct bell shape. It's one of the first jellyfish. Sam promises himself it's the last destination he's going to visit, 600 million years BCE. It was a good idea to pick this time, because the man can see some of the first fungi. They live in water and will move to land only 140 million years later. 250 million years BCE, they already become one of the main forms of life on Earth. Interestingly, new discoveries make scientists believe the very first fungi could have evolved more than a billion years ago. Sam is almost one billion years into the past when he decides he's seen enough. It's time to head home. Only his time machine isn't functioning. Panicking, Sam begins to press the buttons, first all together and then one by one. But all his efforts are futile. 
Finally, he presses a random button combination and poof, disappears. The only problem is, he hasn't returned to our time yet.